All right, everyone. Hello, hail, and welcome to this week's episode of Midgard Musings. My name is Jesse, and as always, I am your host here on this channel. Usually upload new videos every Sunday, uh, Sunday night, um, and it's always usually related about Norse heathenry, um, things that may strike my fancy at the time. Uh, today is actually episode five of an ongoing series that I run here on the channel. It's usually a once a month type of video. Uh, around the beginning of each month, um, episode five of the Deity Discussion series. And the deity for the topic of discussion this week is hell. Um, so before we go into the conversation, um, I do want to say thank you for watching. If you haven't yet already, please become a subscriber. Once you've subscribed, click the bell notification so that we are always notified whenever I upload new content. Um, I'm also going to be starting to go live here on the channel more probably once a week or so as well, um, maybe Monday nights. So tune in tomorrow for just a live stream here on the YouTube channel if you can. Um, become a subscriber, donate to the channel any, in any way that you can. Um, I am trying to get to the National Pagan Pride event in September as a vendor and um, asking for some help to cover the, 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 the fees for the vendor fees. So if you're able to and want to donate, the, the PayPal link is down here in the description of the video and I would greatly appreciate it. Even if all you do is share it around, let other people know, it's greatly appreciated. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get this candle lit, and we will start the discussion of hell. This is actually a, um, I mean, all the, all the deities are going to be covered um, over time, um, but hell is one of those deities that um, has been actually requested a lot. Got our incense going. So this is, uh, this is one that I think a lot of people have been looking forward to. I've been looking forward to covering this one as well. All right. So <clears throat> hell is um, one of the offspring or children of Loki. And she presides over the realm that is named after her. So you will hear the place called Hell. Um, and that's H-E-L, singular L, no, no double L, like you would see in the, um, you know, the Christian uh, place of torment, eternal torment for evildoers. Um, but so Hell is a physical place. Um, will also be, sometimes be called Hellheim. Um, and Hell presides over that realm. It's considered to be the land of uh, the realm of the dead uh, where the dead go um, that don't end up in such a place like Valhalla or or Folkvang or, or any of the other realms of the gods um, we'll get into that discussion a little bit later on in the video but the, the, the physical person herself the deity if you will uh, like I said is a daughter of Loki and the, the giantess Ang Angerboda Angerboda <laughs> Sorry about that mispronunciation there first. Angerboda uh, is Loki's uh, wife who, who they produce three children together, Hel being one of them. The other two are Fenrir, the wolf, and the world serpent Jormungandr. Um, so I would attest that um, Hel is not so much a god or goddess uh, or of the Aesir, is, is, is most, most likely more giant um, Jotnar race, which the way the, the 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 word Jotnar trying to kind of translate doesn't necessarily could could possibly not necessarily mean that they were giant in the terms of their size they were just a different race of you know um, of a deity so to speak um, so I look at hell as as being somewhat of giant stock or Jotnar stock um, and the name hell uh, is a it comes from a Proto Germanic uh, root. Uh, of a word uh, meaning hidden, uh, a hidden place or concealed. Um, so the location of Hell or Helheim is um, quite often displayed as being underground, but it, yet it faces north. Um, so it could be that you know you have to face north and before you go under to reach Helheim, right? Um, there's not a whole lot of information in the myths. Um, about hell, the person, about her. Um, we do have something that describes her, I believe it's in the Prose Edda, uh, kind of Snorri, Sturluson, 
uh, goes into a bit of descriptive detail about hell. Um, but he describes her as being half flesh colored um, and half blue uh, or black, or which would indicate, uh, for most everybody anyway, understands it, that she is kind of split down the middle, half of her face or half of her appearance being that of the living. Um, and the blue part can mean that you know she's resembling that of a corpse. So the other half uh, of her face, of her appearance, uh, resembles that of, of a dead corpse. So there's a lot of different artist renditions that you'll see out there of, of that. Um, but then the other thing that we hear about her, um, and like I said, there's not a whole lot of prominent information in the mess, but the one that does kind of put a spotlight on her is during the uh, death hour after, actually, the death of Balder. Howard Mould has written um, from Osgard on Sleipnir, and he has written um, to Helheim to basically ask for the body of Balder. Can we get Balder back? Because we can, everybody's not doing so well without him, right? So <clears throat> Hermod gets to Hell and reaches uh, the Queen of Hell Hel herself and asks to have Balder uh, return, uh, have, have him go back to Osgard. And Hell doesn't give him up. Um, he, she says that the only way that she will allow Balder to leave is if everything in all the nine realms weeps for Balder. You know, so this being something that seems like a pretty reasonable, you know, request, Thermod makes it, you know, takes uh, his ride back to Osgar, tells the gods, <coughs> excuse me, what the conditions of hell are, um, and then of course, Everything weeps for Balder except for for one uh, figure, one uh, who, who is deemed as a, a Loki in disguise, and that figure does not weep for Balder, and so therefore Balder is not returned to the Aesir. Um, so this indicates to me that in terms of the kind of figure that Hell is, um, that she's greedy, um, and, and she's not going to give up, um, and she doesn't expect anything to... And she's not one of the. It's not. She's not like with with many of the gods or with many of the other deities, um, where the gift exchange cycle is is so important. It, it it almost doesn't seem to matter to hell so much um, what is given. It's that she won't. You know. So at least that's my approach. That's how I look at hell. I know a lot of uh, folks will work with hell in ritual, um, especially when it comes to anything that you know, say they're um, trance work, things of that nature, um, anything that you're trying to do to, you know, transcend this, the, the physical place that you're in and actually go uh, and, and project yourself to the realms of the sacred. I've, I've heard and seen where hell has been a, a figure, a deity that gets invoked um, during those types of ritual. So, um, but the actual place hell um it's kind of uh, the, the descriptive parts that we have in the lore of it indicate that it's kind of dark and dreary not terribly unpleasant but just kind of you know somber if you will or um this is the place like i said before where the dead go um where snorri says the dead go who die of sickness and old age um, that don't die um, in, in, uh, in battle to go to Valhalla. But again, with Snorri being Snorri, he can will, and will sometimes contradict himself because, again, with like the whole Balder thing, um, when he ends up in hell after being violently killed, um, it's almost like, well, why didn't he end up in Odin's Hall, you know, if, if he was killed violently in a way. And, um, but again, um, some people will argue that hell... Uh, or a lot of, not so some people, but a lot of historical uh, scholars and stuff will, will, will say that hell was the place where all the dead go, um, and that there's halls and stuff that, that, that are kind of broken up um, in hell um, that, they, that they can go to, and that there's you know, ways that you can come and go from hell to these other halls in the afterlife. So it's a pretty complex thing. It's not a real one-cut dry scenario, you know, uh, at least when it comes to the, the concepts of the afterlife in Norse culture. It's pretty complex. Um, but hell, 
herself, um, like I said, seems to me as being the sort of figure that is greedy, um, but not, you know, a generous host. Because going back to the Balder story, when he is there, when Hermod arrives, uh, Balder is actually in a seat of honor with a great feast that's been uh, prepared for him. Um, so it doesn't seem like, you know, when you going there is going to be too terribly unpleasant at all. Um, I look at it as the place where our ancestors uh, rest, where we can rest after um, our time when Midgard and existence is over, um, and that we can enjoy the, some of the, the, the generosities uh, of hell as a, as a host uh, in her hall. We'll be able to eat, be able to you know spend time with one another, um, enjoy one another's company. So um, I look at hell as being you know, still greedy because the the grave does not give up the dead. You know what I'm saying? So in in, in that sense, and in her being the ruler of that realm, um, she's greedy, but in a, in a protective sort of way. Um, so I look at her presence, or I look at her, you know, how she is as a deity, as being greedy but generous as a host, and then protective in her own right, um, not willing to give up for just anything. You know. Um, so I have never personally worked in a ritual uh, work and done any ritual work or any sort of thing like that that has invoked or worked with hell. Um, there are probably some people here watching now that maybe have or that have a special affinity towards hell herself. So please let me know in the comments um, what your experience with hell is. I'd love to hear everybody's own take on it, um, how you've gotten to know this deity, how you know if this deity speaks to you in a way and if you feel drawn to that. To her uh, to be able to work with her um, and so that's kind of my whole thing um, I'm anxious to hear what everybody else has to say before we end the video I do want to call attention to the fact that like I had told everybody once this channel hits a thousand subscribers that I will be doing a giveaway and I've already kind of talked about it on a live stream but I did want to let everybody know here now that that giveaway item will be worked on this week probably a little bit during the live stream tomorrow it's a wood burning um and it's going to be a, like a keepsake box um you'll see it more in detail tomorrow on the youtube channel during the live stream so definitely check back on that um check back on the facebook page because i'm not exactly sure what time i'll be going live tomorrow will probably be somewhere around six or seven o'clock in the evening central time um so anyways guys tune in for that um, so you can see the, the, the giveaway item that is going to be uh, the prize uh, in celebration for reaching a thousand subscribers. If you haven't already, become a subscriber now and you can do so just by clicking on the floating Midgard Musings logo that you see right up here. Check out some of the other related content that you see popping up in the end screen as well. Share it around, leave your comments down below, I'd love to hear what everybody has to say. And tune again uh, next Sunday for our regular broadcast of our next subject have yet to decide what that is so everybody that's watching on facebook stick around so we can have a little bit of a discussion and everybody up here on the youtube channel thank you again for your support and i'll see you all again in next week's video hail